hey, welcome back. Pull up a chair and stay a while. Well, so this is the newest typewriter in my collection, the Canon Type Star 220. That's right, the 220. I got this today because one of the librarians at the Special Collections Library downtown Albuquerque, anyway, they called me and said, hey, we have a couple typewriters we want to get rid of. And this was one of them. It was super filthy, dirty, wasn't really working all that well. I have some type samples of what it was doing when it wasn't working, and then I'll show you what I did to fix it. And then we'll take a look at some of the printing now that it does, how nice it prints, and some of the features. And it came with one of the original printing cartridges that prints on conventional paper, and it has a correction feature. Yes, a correction feature on a thermal typewriter. You heard that. Stay tuned. All right, let's see if we can thread some paper into this here typewriter. Looks like the carriage release is a little wonky. Okay, let's do some typing, shall we? Keyboard feels pretty good. Ah, it prints. Well, that looks pretty good. Actually, nice and dark, surprisingly. So in my haste, I didn't realize that we're actually using a Canon cartridge. Let's actually try it on thermal only. This might explain why the printing was so nice and dark, eh? Hey? Okay. Thermal only. It's actually not bad. Well, this has a pretty dark imprint on thermal paper in the bold mode. I'm pretty happy. However, if you do a series of carriage returns, it doesn't return to the same left margin. The left margin moves to the right on every carriage return. So there's something slipping that I'm going to have to work on. So to take the unit apart, on the bottom of it, in the middle of the left side is a screw here, and one on the middle of the right side is a screw here. And then on the back side, there's two screws on the right and two screws on the left to take out. So for a total of six screws. Okay, so once you take those screws out, the whole top will carefully lift off. Be very careful with these ribbon cables. Don't stretch them too tightly. The entire print mechanism will actually pick up and out like that, but it's connected via some ribbon cables here, so you can't just pull it out straight away. And then the feed mechanism here for the paper, I'm going to have to clean all this because it's all, you probably tell it's all dusty and dirty. And then the left-hand platen knob assembly has all this gear train here, and you want to clean these with alcohol and a swab and then re-lubricate them with fresh lithium grease. Get all the grit and sand and dirt out of these plastic teeth. Okay, so this particular shaft that you're looking at right there, that had some white lithium grease on it, and it was all hardened up, and the shaft wouldn't turn freely, and it was causing the printhead carrier to not return to the exact same margin position on the left. And so I just cleaned the old grease off and re-greased it here, and it fixed the problem. Can you believe it? So I also cleaned off the old lithium grease and re-greased this whole mechanism that actually it's like a cam operated by this motor that pushes the printhead against the paper and all of these others. I've actually taken the left hand spindle for the cassette off of here, re-cleaned up the shaft and re-greased it. And this gear down here, driven by this brass gear off a motor, I cleaned this whole sprocket as well and re-greased it just uh, putting fresh lithium grease down in place of the old stuff. Okay, so after doing all those re-greasings, you want to put the drive spindle back for the cassette. And you will have an E-clip. Here is the E-clip itself. I'm going to try to fit it around the slot in the tip of the shaft for that thing. And then we'll snap it on with a pair of needle nose, like that. Viola. Okay, that's in place. This gear here will pop out. Make sure it doesn't fall out. And what holds all this in place is the plate that covers it all. Okay, this plate fits down in here and it's held on by three screws. Turn the aperture tighter so you have more depth of focus. So anyway, there's three little screws. Magnetized tweezers work pretty well to hold these screws 
So you can start them with your Phillips. There we go. So along with the uh, drive mechanism for the printhead, I've also cleaned and relubricated this rail back here that the printhead moves along. And also this rectangular shaft, I cleaned and lubricated it also. And oh, by the way, my desk is a mess here. It's a complete mess. All the stuff I was using to work on the typewriter and just everything here. So I got to show you that. This is a working studio desk. So these were some of the first test typings I did on the machine, and you'll notice every time I did a carriage return, it returned back to not quite as far as the original left margin. And then as I did more testing, you can see it doing it continuously. So now this column here is when it was doing the problem before I degreased and recleaned that mechanism, and this is afterwards the test I ran. Nice and consistent. Okay, when I got this typewriter, it didn't come, of course, in a bag. It did not come with the power adapter, the AC adapter, and I'm currently using the one for my other type star. It's the same connector, same voltage. And then it had four Duracell D cells in the battery compartment. They were not corroded, so these are probably the older style alkalins that had lead in them, so they don't leak because of the lead. It did have one of the original film print cartridges that has the correction feature and it did have the snap-on lid and the 102 page manual which is very cool the typewriter is now cleaned up and I've been testing it and it's wonderful I think it's my favorite thermal typewriter right now the keyboard is every bit as good as the Casio writer the Casio writer is that one thermal typewriter where it had a great keyboard, great display, but it's just the way it works, it's noisy, and it could have been a much better thermal typewriter. But this one has a great keyboard. It has the release the caps lock by hitting the caps lock again, which really works if you're used to computer keyboards, which this kind of reminds me of, right? It has a lot of features. Okay, I really like it. It was missing one of the platen knobs or carriage knobs, but the knob that's here pulls off and it'll fit on either side and I currently have it on the left side because the left side is the one where you push in to release the clutch for continuous adjustment. So these are the various typefaces it does. It does a script PS, it does a Swiss PS, it does an italic 12, it does a courier 10 and then it has a shaded effect and there's like seven or eight different shading effects it'll do and it has a really nice dark imprint. So it's nice being able to switch typefaces or type styles they call it mid paragraph just by hitting a couple keys. Very impressed and the margin is nice and straight. Okay now I'm going to try the word erase. Will this erase and now the word erase key. Oh interesting. It makes three passes, four passes. Ah, it is definitely erased, and you can see maybe there's a little bit of paper fibers that have been lifted off. And the manual says that if your imprint quality is too dark, it might pull some of the fibers off the paper. And the imprint darkness is set with a three position switch on the right side of the machine next to the power switch. And I am in the darkest position. And you have to use the CR100 ribbon cartridge in order to get the correction feature. And uh, this little spot right here is where it was lifting off the print off the paper. And you can see it's probably the whiteness is a little bit of the paper fibers as well. And now to get the maximum print quality, we're going to be on script and bold mode and darkest print quality. Oh yeah. Look at that wonderful printing. Ooh, sweet. So this typewriter has so many features that it's really kind of impossible for me to cover them in a short video like this. Short video. It's all there in the 102 page manual. Maybe if I'll get around to someday scanning this, keeping in mind I don't have a scanner and these pages are bound so you can't really feed them into a a feeding type scanner. You have to use a flatbed. Anyways, one of these days maybe I'll get this scanned and get it online so you guys can enjoy reading all the features of this typewriter, but it's very impressive. And now having it cleaned up like it is, 
I'm quite happy with it. This manual was printed in, let's see, 1992. So one of the things they changed is all the older thermal typewriters I have from the mid-1980s, the caps lock works like a typewriter. That is, to release the caps lock, you have to hit a shift key. But this machine now operates like a computer keyboard. To release the caps lock, you hit the caps lock again. I like that. There's a lot of interesting features. There is a 55,000 word spelling dictionary. There is a three and a half kilobyte memory, so basically electronic document that you can type into here and edit it, and then you can print it out whenever you want. I like the touch of the keyboard. It's even better than the older type stars. And this is the darkest printing thermal typewriter in my collection now. Well, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be doing some more thermal typewriter comparisons between the Type Star 220 and the other ones in my collection. In any event, this is just another tool for creativity, for creative writing. In this case, a very portable, fairly quiet, very quiet in fact, tool for creative writing. If you want to write in public and not bother people, or write late at night like it is now, that's a great tool to use as a thermal typewriter. I want to give a shout out also to Gregory Short, the poor typist. He is one of the enablers of thermal typewriters in the typewriter community at large. Thank you, Gregory, for all you do and for all you guys do. Thank you. And you stay well. Have a great day. Bye-bye for now.